So I'm going to show you how to crochet a sock. Here's a sock I've done. I've done it in a basket weave stitch, which is a lot simpler than you think. And a sock looks quite complicated. It's a complicated shape, but it's actually, again, a lot easier than you would think. And I'm going to just going to um, analyse how it's done. If you, instead of having it flat that way, flatten it this way at the front, what you see is it's actually just a tube that's enclosed at the toe, a little bit of decrease here. And if you turn it over and you look at the heel, you've still got a tube, but the heel is just an enclosed flap joined along that edge. It's just a little flap sticking out. If I fold that in half, you can see. So this is a bed sock and as such I'm just going to use up some yarn that I don't like. It looks quite good on the video, it looks like a salmon pink but it's actually a lot ickier than that. I'm trying to find the ends, there it is. This is double knitting, which is a UK weight of yarn and if you're in another country that, other than the UK then choose any ball of yarn that recommends the use of 4mm knitting needles. I'm going to use quite a big hook because of the basket weave stitch. It can be too tight and stiff if you use a small hook. Um, so I'm using a 6mm hook. And I'm going to use this icky colour for the main body of the sock. And I've got some other, another sort of blurgy looking green there. And just odd balls I need to use up. So I'll use one for the heel, one for the band at the top. Well, obviously this is just one version of a sock. There's lots and lots of ways you can crochet socks. You don't have to use basket weave. You can use a plain stitch if you want to. And these are nice, thick, chunky bed socks. It should be nice and cosy. And we're going to start at the toe. So we're going to start here. I'm going to knit in a round, so knit, sorry, crochet in a round. So I'm going to do the chain stitch and then work along one side of the chain stitch and then up along the other side. And then back that way and back that way, joining on one side. Here we go. So begin with a slip knot. Make seven chain. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. And we're going to start increasing immediately. And I'm going to use double crochet. I'm English. I'm from the UK. And I call it a double crochet. If you're American, or use um, American terminology, you would call it a single crochet. So I'm going to do two double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So I'm going to increase immediately we start two into one chain. And then I'm just going to do double crochet until the next to last stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, double crochet. And again, we're going to increase at the end, but before I do that, take my hook out so I can use it as a pointer. So we're going to do two double crochet into the last chain. But we're also going to work up the other side so we're going to do that and then turn around this way and work along these loops on the other side, the bottom edge of your chain. So in effect you're doing two for this side, you're going to turn around and you're going to do two for that side. So really you're doing four into that end chain, so that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three, And as you can see, it naturally turns round to the other side anyway. 
So we've done two into the first loop, one into each of the next four loops, loop there, left, and we're going to increase into that one, so we're going to do two double crochets, or single if you're American, into that last loop. And we're back at the beginning again. So we've gone all down that side, two lots of increases at the end, so we've done four into that last chain, straight up that side, and increased at the end. Now what we need to do now is to slip stitch into that first stitch there, just to join the two rows together, the two ends together. So just pull that through and then straight through the one on your hook. And just one chain to turn. Turn it round and we're going to work the next row straight. So we've got a total there of 16 stitches. So we need to work 16 stitches round here. Now be careful where you insert your hook. It's quite difficult to see but if you turn it up that way you can see where all your stitches are. So do note that that is not a stitch, that is your slip stitch, that first one there. You don't want to work into your slip stitch or you could end up with too many. So miss that one out, do your first one into there and you're going to do 16 stitches. So one into the last one, that's 16, and again, slip stitch to join into that first stitch. Insert your hook, pull the yarn through and pull it through one on your hook. One chain to turn, and now we're going to increase again, so again, that's your slip stitch, ignore that one. And we're going to do two into the next stitch to increase there. Double crochet into the next six. Do two into the next stitch. And two into the stitch after that. And then into the next six stitches. And then increase again at the end, making two into the last stitch. And then slip stitch into the first stitch of the last row. So now you've got four extra stitches, which gives us 20. And you're going to do one row straight. It's the first one, that's your slip stitch. Count 20 all the way round. and again slip stitch to join into the first stitch just that one there one chain to turn there's a siren going there can you hear that I'm sitting near a hospital okay so we're going to increase again on the next row. So as usual, miss the slip stitch, that's not a stitch. Two. Into the first one. And then eight plain double crochets, or single crochets, if you like. That's two, three. Um, 
two into each of the next two stitches so it's two into that one to increase two into that one and then eight again and then two into the last stitch and slip stitch to join and you can see the toe starting to take shape there so next row just work straight Last couple of stitches there, join with a slip stitch. One chain to turn and then this is the last increase row. Working two into the first stitch. And ten straight. Work two into the next two. Then ten two into the last stitch and join with a slip stitch one chain to turn and then the last row just work straight and you should have then twenty eight stitches. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. If you're keeping the same colour, join with a slip stitch. If you're changing colour, um, change on the slip stitch. So you need to change it, your colour at this point. So let's just break that yarn off. Sorry, no scissors handy. Making a slip stitch with your new colour of yarn. Pulling it through, pulling it through. And this time we're going to do two chain to turn and we're going to do a row of half trebles. Now for this you don't count your, ch your turning chain as a stitch. Wrap it around your hook, insert your hook, pull it through, you've got three sorry three loops on your hook pull the yarn through all three all the way around 28 stitches 26 27 sorry that's 27 28 and as usual Join with a slip stitch into the top of that turning chain, pull it through, pull it through, two chain to turn. As I said, we're not counting that as a stitch. We need to turn round. I'm just going to start the basket weave stitch now, working in trebles or if you're American, double crochet. Now normally you'd do three chain to turn, but because we're doing the round the post stitches, your stitches will be a bit shorter, so you don't need three chain there, you only need two. So we're going to do one round, working around the post stitch from the front. So instead of inserting your hook into the stitch, you wrap your hook round the post of the stitch. and work a treble. Or double crochet as I said if you're American. And the same on the next stitch. Or 
Now for the next two stitches you're working round from the back. So t you wrap it round as usual. Take your hook behind your work, pull it to the front and then to the back. Finish off your treble stitch and again in the next one, and so on and so forth. Two to the front, two to the back, all the way round. Right, so, going all the way round, doing those same stitches two to the front, two to the back. And that's a total of 28 stitches, not counting the turning chain. So then of course you slip stitch to join. Slip stitch into the top of that turning chain. And make two chain and turn and then you repeat the same row two to the front one two so I'm just pulling some yarn off my ball of wool there we go two to the back Doing that slowly so you can see better. Two to the front. Two to the back. So on, oops, so on and so forth, right to the end. And you can see it's starting to take shape there. These stitches raised to the front. Turn it over, those stitches are raised to the back. And in between them, the top of the stitches going across sideways. So they look like the warp, and these ones look like they're going underneath, as if they're being woven underneath. Yeah, those going that way, those going that way, up and sideways. So we carry on doing that all the way around and join with the slip stitch as before, and make a turning chain. <clears throat> so the next row, you do the opposite. So whereas before you were going from the front, this time you go from the back. And that pulls that stem of that stitch below to the back. And the same on the next stitch. And it leaves the top of the stitch going across. You'll, you'll see it coming into pattern as we do a few more rows. And then the next two from the front. from the back again I'm trying
trying to do this slowly so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just stretching it out so you can see where the stitches are around the stem from the back. And then again the next two from the front. And so on all the way around and join with the slip stitch and make two chain to turn when you get to the end. And the fifth row which is the fourth row of pattern and it's exactly the same as the last row so taking your needle from the back around the post of the first stitch and working a treble or as I keep saying if you're American that's a double crochet and round the post the next stitch along from the back. So that, that's the first two stitches, the next two from the front. Whoopsie daisy, sorry. <laughs> Again, from the front. And then two back, two front, two back, two front, all the way along to the end. And you can see we're starting to get this basket weave pattern. Obviously finish this fourth row as before. Um, so that's five rows all together, one row of half trebles and then four rows of basket weave. And you need to repeat those four rows again and again until, I can't remember how many stitches, So that's where I'm up to now. I've done the toe and 13 rows and you can see how that basket weave is coming along. This is the one I finished. This is where we're up to here. We've come this far. So you work the heel on just half of your tube. You decrease and increase again. But at the same time you need to join the two at the sides. Sounds quite difficult but it's not that difficult. So I'm going to join in a new colour for the heel but I don't want to um, cut off the yarn and the main part because we'll be picking up on that again after we've done the heel. So beginning at the end of that last row and you end by slip stitching into the turning chain of the last row but use your new colour that's if you're changing colour okay and then two chain sorry one chain to turn because we're going to do the heel in double crochet if you're American that's single crochet and we're just going to go halfway around the tube so it's 28 stitches so 14 stitches across Working into the stitch, not round the posts this time. So that's the first row done. One chain to turn. And then work straight across the next row, but we're going to decrease at the end of each row. So into every stitch, there's the first one. But this time we're only going to do 13 stitches. Instead of decreasing by crocheting two stitches together, we're just going to miss out the last stitch on every row. And I'll show you why. So that's the 12th stitch. The 13th stitch, we're not going to do the 14th, just going to do one chain and turn. Work into the first. So there's 13 stitches along this row, but we're only going to do 12 of them. So that's 
the 11th, 12, miss out the 13th, one chain and turn. So there's the heel, and we're left with eight stitches and these little steps. And we're going to do one chain to turn, and we're going to have to start decreasing again, sorry, increasing again. But we want the ends of our increased roads to join with the ends of the decreased rows. One chain and turn. And then work into every stitch. Do two into the last stitch because you want to start increasing now. And then, as I said, these little ledges show where we need to join. So just a slip stitch into that stitch on that that was left out at the end of that row. So pull through and pull through the loop on the hook. One chain to turn. And then we need to work in every stitch again. So there's the one, two that we did at the end there. So first one into there. And count, there should be nine now. One, two, eight, nine. Up to the end of that row, and we need to slip stitch again into that ledge down there. and one chain to turn. So there should be 10 stitches on this row. One, two, nine. And don't forget that these rows are curving down a bit. It's quite hard to see where the last stitch is. You think you're at the end there, but you're not. And if you look and turn it over there, you'll see that last stitch there to go into number 10. But we need to do two into that one, which gives us 11 stitches. And again, join in with a slip stitch onto that next little edge. And you keep doing that until you have got 24 stitches again. You can see that heel starting to take shape. One chain to turn and then carry on. Across 11 stitches, two into the end, join with a slip stitch, and so on until there's 24 stitches. Coming to the last row, end of the last row of the heel here, and that was 11, 12, 13, to that last stitch there, and then one extra one. Right down at the bottom here is the last little step to go into, so we slip stitch into that. And that's it, and we can break off that yarn because we won't be using the green again. I'm going to fasten that off because where we left off with the pink over on the other side. So we take that pink where we left off here just and took that out of the way we can darn that in later. And I'm just going to insert my needle hook sorry there and pull a loop through and then do two chain. Now we've got to continue with the basket weave and we're going to start by going round the heel and then across here but as you know from the beginning when we went for um, started at the toe the first row 
is a row of half trebles or if you're American half double crochet so we need to do 20 sorry not 28 14 half double crochets in these stitches and then continue with the basket weave along here well, the reason I can tell you have to start off here and go this way not that way but is by looking here the way the stitches are lying so obviously on this row the last row we did was in this direction you can just tell by the way the stitches are lying we went in that direction and then along the back to here so now we have to go back that way but we've already put the heel there so we have to go round the other side of the heel and we start work start making our tube coming up begin by doing that 14 half trebles going all around the heel it's quite difficult to see where the first stitch is but don't worry too much as long as um, as long as you end up with 14 13, 14, and then we start on the basket we just pop that end out of the way over there. So yeah, the last two rows of the foot part of the sock, um, we did the stitches sticking out this way, so we need them to stick out through the back, so you take your hook round that way at the back. So wrap it round. back, wrap it round, in round the back, doing trebles now by the way or double crochet if you're American, okay wrap it round and pull that stitch to the front wrap around your hook, pull that stitch to the front and the next two to the back, the next two to the front and so on all the way around last two stitches And then we need to join with a slip stitch to the beginning chain there. So through the top of that, oops, see, through the top of that first chain. Just a slip stitch to join. Two chain to turn. And continue with the basket weave. across the front of the sock so I'm coming to the point now where we've got to the half trebles and at the last two stitches there were to the front so the first two stitches on the half trebles we're going to pull the stem of the stitch to the back two and then the next two to the front the next two to the back sorry yep. 
another one to the back, and so on and so forth. Front, two to the back, till you get to the end, and join with a slip stitch as usual into that turning chain there. And continue with your basket weave in a round until the sock is as long as you want it. Last two stitches on the half trebles and remember although your last row was half trebles you're now doing trebles in American terms although your last row was half double crochet you are now doing double crochet if that makes sense and join with a slip stitch into the top of that turning chain that was at the beginning of the row Two chain, turn. Remember that those last two rows, your first stitch was to the front. So the next two rows, the first two stitches are to the back. Anything you're not clear about? Contact me at the website. You'll see the website address at the end of this video. So there's my sock. I've done about 18 rows from the heel, but you can make it as long or as short as you want to. So I'm going to change colour again. As you know, you can do it all in one colour if you want to, but I'm just using up odd lengths of yarn that I'll never use for anything else. End of the last row, I'm just going to join with a slip stitch using the new colour. Pull that last stitch time there. Two chain to turn. I'm going to work in half trebles, which if you are American is a half double crochet, and instead of working round the stitch I'm just going to work into the top of each stitch all the way around. Again you can make this, um, I don't know what you call it, top welt um, cuff as long or as short as you want to. I'm going to do four rows. So that's 27, 28, slip stitch into the turning chain to join the two ends together, two chain to turn, and do three more rows or more or less depending on the look that you're after. So a slip stitch to join off to the last row and I've um, broken off the yarn there. I'm just going to pull it through fasten off and then all you need to do is get a blunt a large eyed blunt sewing needle to darn all these ends in and you're done well not quite done unless you've only got one foot <laughs> 